The Joseph Seal. What is it? What does it prove? On this episode of Ancient Egypt and the Bible. Today, we are going to discuss a scarab that was found at the city of Avaris that reads Yakub Har, Jacob Har. In the documentary, The Exodus Decoded, Simka Yakubovich suggested that this was part of a signet ring that was worn by the patriarch Joseph. He makes the argument that Joseph had these scarabs made and used one of them as his personal signet ring. But does this really bear out in the evidence? Well, today we are going to take a look at this, this particular scarab, and try to make sense of it. So, I think it helps to sort of just, like, get into it. and. By getting into it, essentially examine it and see what Scarab says and the problems that underlie this particular reading. Okay. Now, strictly speaking, the Yakub Har Scarab is not evidence of Joseph. Okay. If anything, it's only evidence of Jacob. And that's because it mentions Yakub Har but not specifically Joseph. So it's probably better to call it the Jacob scarab than the Joseph scarab. But nevertheless, it's not direct evidence of Joseph. But there are some problems here that are go even beyond just the reading of the scarab itself. First, it would be really peculiar for a person of as high a status as Joseph to wear a scarab of his father. This is not a practice that was done in either Egypt or in Canaan. In Canaan, people had personal seals, personal signets. But this was not so much done in Egypt. In Egypt, people carried the scarabs of kings, not their own personal signets. So this is this would be very peculiar for Joseph to do living at the city of Avaris. Another matter is the fact that the word Jacob means to be protected. And it's a common name found in Semitic cultures. There are actual actually several uh, attestations of of Jacob uh, found in Akkadian. For example, Yakub L is attested in Akkadian. So it's actually a very common name. It's a name that's found throughout the ancient Near East. So just because we find Jacob attested here on a signet in Egypt doesn't mean it's the same Jacob. You know, this is one of the, the, the problems with finding names in the ancient Near East is People reuse the same names over and over again. I mean, how many Davids are there in history? In 2,000, 3,000 years of history, there's many Davids. How many Johns are there in history? Too many count. You know, we find kings of England named John. We find apostles named John. People reuse the same names over and over and over again. And this was true of the ancient Near East, just as it's true of of today. So just because we find an attestation of the name Jacob, it doesn't mean it's the same Jacob. Okay? So that's just the problem with the names itself. But there's also a problem with the cartouche that I think really needs to be mentioned. And if you if you look at the scarab here, the picture of the scarab, you'll notice that the name is actually inside a cartouche, which is a ring, a ring with a little base on it. Now, that symbol, the cartouche, was a reserved symbol. It was only used of kings. The problem is Jacob was never a king. And he was never recognized in the Bible or in Egyptian culture as a king. 
he was considered a you know a a patriarch he was uh, the head of a clan but that's not the same as being a king so it would almost be insurrection for joseph to make scarabs with the name of his father basically elevated to the status of a king this would this would be undermining the authority of the current Hyksos ruler. So this is something that doesn't actually make a lot of sense historically. The other problem with tying the Yakupar scarab uh, to Jacob is that this wasn't the only example of this scarab found. Several of these scarabs have been found. And with that, those scarabs have been found variations of the name. The fact is that Yakuharb is a well-attested king of the Second Intermediate Period. His full name is Mer Usur Rei Yakub Her or Mer Usur Rei Jacob Baal. And his name translates to Beloved is the power of Ray, protected of either Hare or Baal. So when we look at a name like Jacob Hare, we have to sort of recognize that this is a it's a Semitic name. It's an Amoritic imperfective name which means it begins with an imperfective verb and ends with the name of a god, a deity. So we would expect that Har is the name of a deity or god, although it's not a name of a deity or god that has been attested. Nevertheless, Baal and Re are gods that are well known. So what are we to make of this? If we connect this, scarab to Jacob. Was he a worshipper of Baal? Was he a worshipper of of the Egyptian sun god Re? Uh I would doubt it. I would doubt it in both cases. Uh, furthermore, the use of the word Usur, which means powerful or mighty in Egyptian, in his nomen name suggests that Yaqub Har lived during the end of Dynasty 15 as possibly one of the short-lived rulers of Dynasty 15 that ruled Varus during the last, the turbulent last 20 years under Hyksos rule. This would be way too late for it to be Jacob. This would be long after the death of even Joseph. So we have to consider that here that, say, the etymology of uh, Mer Usare, Yakub Har, or Yakub Baal is probably dates to late Dynasty 15. So while the Yakub Har scarab is definitely interesting, it is, it's interesting because it it dis it tells us gives us information about a 15th dynasty king it's not really evidence for joseph or jacob as much as we would love it to be so anyway i hope you found that helpful and i hope you found that interesting thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time on ancient egypt and the bible